everybody uh, enjoyed the breakfast that, that ate here um, and um, excited for today. Um, I'm going to ask everybody that's in the surrounding areas, hey, we're going to get ready for worship. We have the uh, Time and Destiny uh, worship band here. They traveled, uh, they traveled all the way from Sanger. They brought every one of their musicians and all their equipment. And you're in for a treat because they're they're awesome. Um, and so I, I'd like to ask them to uh, let's show uh, respect and honor and everybody come up and uh, uh, worship with us. We're also going to have a powerful word from our national VP, Pastor Freddie. Um, if you've never heard him speak, uh, you're in for a ride. So today's going to be an, an awesome day. So uh, put on your sandals, your chunk gloves, get out of your trailers, and uh, let's let's come and join and. We're about to have some church, and uh, we got a we have a great day in store for you. So, anyway, um, let's uh, let's praise and worship. Amen, amen. Let's go ahead and get um, stand stand for our feet this morning. You know, this next song that we're gonna do this morning is called "I Thank God," and you know we are worshiping in a beautiful place. We're used to being inside church and in our in our four walls, but this morning we're out here. We're we're camping out. We're enjoying the the nature and this morning. Blessed this morning. Come on. Come on. Let's hear you guys get excited this morning. How many of you are blessed this morning? Let's just thank God for another day, for being surrounded by the people that we love and being surrounded by his presence this morning. Amen. 
I said, we, hey, hey, and like Pastor Paul said, hey, how can you not get excited, right? Hey, it's time to get up, right? So still we got people kind of wandering, wandering back in the camp. I know you got to do your business, whatever you got to do. But let's say, hey, let's get everybody up here and let's have some church. And uh, here, go ahead, Pastor Paul. Okay, all the, who's the warrior of faith here? No, 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 I, I'm not hearing that. You guys hearing anything? I said, who's the warrior of faith here? Okay, all the men go, whoo! All the women go, yeah! Okay, all the men go, whoo! All the women go, yeah! Okay, let's gather right here in the middle right here. Can everybody join right here, please? Come on, Malone, you start it off. Right here, everybody, come right here. Right in the middle, right here, right here, right here. Everybody, all from the outskirts, Ray, 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 come over here. Brother Isaac, come on down. Bring, bring Lodo over here. Bring Lodo. Rob Dodd, come on. Let's go right here in the middle. Right here, right here, right in front of James. Right here. Come on. Let's get this party started. Malone, are you ready? Come on, everybody up in the middle. Come on, Adam. Let's go. We got uh, Men of Prayer International. We got, boy, come on, man, everybody. Who's a warrior here? I say, who's a warrior here? Okay, Rob Dodd, come right up here, Rob. I want the national president right here up first. Rob, come up here, come up here. A little bit more, more. Everybody out there, come on in. Come on in, everybody. And you got stop making the burritos. Come over here. National VP. National VP right here. Okay, hold on. Rob, we're going to, okay, right here. Over here more, Isaac, this way, this way, right here in the middle. Come on over here. Come on over here. Right there. Right there. All right? All right. We're going to start it off right here. You ready, Rob? Me, 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 and, me and Jeff are going to start it off, and we're going to just going to go into chain reaction, okay? This is the Come on. Let's sing Hell Lost. Hell Lost, now the one I am.
many know that there's freedom in Christ? I mean, true freedom. You know, uh, but the first song that we sang, you know, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. I think some of us are maybe spiritually dead. Came up here on spiritual life support. Right? Because what I see is, you know, Pastor Paul has really helped me with this. You know, it says in the Word of God, if you deny him on earth, he'll deny you in heaven. And some of us are too cool to wonder what the guy next to you is thinking about the way I, the way I praise and worship God. But you know, true freedom takes place when you can worship God without worrying about anything else but pleasing your Father. That's when true freedom happens. And I believe to this weekend, now this weekend wasn't just thrown together in a month, two months. This is something that was an overflow of last year in Oregon, right, TR? An overflow of what God is doing, not only in our ministries, but ministries all across the country and all across the world, right? And so what you're here today, this just didn't happen. It wasn't just thrown together because we don't have anything better to do or, or any better places to go. Is it hot standing out there worshiping? It might be. But we get to serve. We don't have to serve. We get to serve. On, we get now. to serve the God, the, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You know, sometimes I'm reserved or I'm afraid of what people think. I struggle with acceptance at times. But when I let go and I let God, and I don't worry about what anybody else thinks or care about what anybody else is doing, that's where true freedom takes place. So I'm going to ask you and I'm going to challenge you guys this weekend. This is something that's been, been well, well thought about, prayerfully put together. You know, the people that are speaking, they didn't just get online and, and, and get a sermon. They, they prepared for months to bring a word for you. So I'm going to ask you to challenge yourself to get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Some of us are in spiritual life support. We need, to, we need to embrace what God is doing in our lives, in our ministry, maybe our health, our finances, our relationships, whatever it is. But as, as the worship team said, hey, we're up here on, I don't know if it's a mountain, or at the coast, wherever, but let's not leave here the same. This is anointed ground. Let's, let's embrace all that God has for us this weekend. We got a great, uh, a great man here that uh, is not only my national VP, He's not only a great man of God, he speaks with such clarity and conviction, but this man here, I am very proud and I'm very honored to call him my brother. Let's give it up for our national vice president, Pastor Freddie. Well, thank you, thank you. Let's give it up for the worship team one more time. Come on now. Man, there's nothing like that to get you started with a little praise and worship in the morning. Amen? Yeah. Amen. What a beautiful day God has given to us today. You know, on a day, a day like this up in Washington, we just say, man, we must have hit the jackpot. Because we don't get a whole lot of days like this. You know, our, our rainy season, I mean, our winter season, you know, goes for about nine or ten months. So we're very thankful when we can ride in, in weather like this and we can ride with people like like you and um, so I'm excited to be here it was worth the sacrifice so praise the Lord grace and peace to you this morning pray that you had a great evening and I was really encouraged uh, last night by all the testimonies and I did bring a word the Lord gave me a word a couple weeks ago for this event I didn't know if I was gonna have an opportunity to share it or not but uh, well, Wu-Tang told me that, uh, yeah, you're definitely sharing. So, praise the Lord. You know, God always goes before us, doesn't he? Amen. I know I need to keep it short because TR says usually when somebody gives you the mic, Pastor Freddy, I have to pack a box lunch. <laughs> so, he's, he's back there. He's going to let me know when I need to cut it off. But I was encouraged by all of the testimonies, and it's probably been 40 years since I've shared a testimony. I'm going to work it into the devotional, but I think you need to know where I came from. Because many times, or many, many of the testimonies that I've heard, I, really lines up in my life. At the age of 12, I gave my heart to the Lord. I was born in 1954, so figure it out. I've been around the planet 
once, and uh, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things in my life. I feel like I've lived more than one lifetime. My grandmother was the influence in my life. I'm going to be talking about influence and who's influencing you. Wow. My mom and dad were great parents. My dad, I guess, my grandmother told me that at an early age, he went down to the altar in a Baptist, little Baptist church in northern Indiana and gave his heart to the Lord. But he wasn't living for the Lord. And my mother, she was from the East Coast. And so they had a whole way, different way of thinking about religion back there, even at that time. But I used to be sent away to my grandmother and grandfather's house every summer when I was old enough to kind of take care of myself and they didn't have to take care of me too much. And we always went to church on Sunday morning, little little rural country Baptist church. And I'd have to go and I go, oh, I don't want to go to church, Grandma. But she always hauled me off. I didn't have to go on Wednesday night, I had to stay home. And she was the piano player in the church and Grandpa was the deacon. Now Grandpa had a few things going on behind the barn. You know, he had a little wine stash down there that Grandma didn't know about it. He smoked a lot of Marlboros, but he still loved the Lord. And I can remember coming back, coming back home. I was I was raised in the South, the South Side of Chicago. Wow, that's where I grew up. And there was a lot of gangs there too. I never got involved in gangs, but I knew some gang members. I I love the the city. I actually love the city. Then in the mid '60s. Dad pulled us out of there because of the race riots. About 67, we moved to the farm in northern Indiana. And I could not wait to get out of the farm. I went to high school there, went to high school in Indiana. And all the while, I'm being influenced by different things like Easy Rider magazine, Hunter S. Thomas. I don't know if you know him or not, but he was an author. And he wrote a book about the Hell's Angels. I would draw pictures in class of motorcycles. I wanted to be a biker. And it's funny how the Lord works because we really don't see the full picture until after we've been down the road a little ways. And so in high school, I had a, a little high school rock and roll band. And we played music for wherever we could. In fact, back in that day, we could actually play in the bar and not be of age. You couldn't drink in the bar, but you could play music in the bar. And so we got pretty darn good. We played just about every weekend, and that's what we did. I met a couple of guys, and I don't remember where I met them at. I think I met them at a party. They were two members of the Chosen Few. It was a one percenter group, and we became very good friends. In fact, we became the house band for the Chosen Few. Now, at 14, I started smoking dope. So I was doing drugs pretty heavily back when I was in high school. And so I got involved with them. Again, I was influenced by my surroundings. Now, I gave my heart to the Lord at 12, but I wasn't living for Jesus. In fact, when I was a senior in high school, I said, I am moving to California, and I'm, um, I'm going to join the Red and Whites. If you don't know what the red and whites are, they're the hell's angels. That was my goal in life, to become an angel. Well, I didn't make it to California. But guess what? God had other plans. Thank you, God. I joined the United States Navy instead. <laughs> I spent four years in the Navy. Still wasn't living for the Lord because I had a lot of influence. I wanted to do my own thing. I saw the world, I've been all over the world, and I've seen a lot of things. But I remember one time, I probably have been into, and I'm not, I, I, hear me, hear, hear me out before you shout me down. I wanted tattoos. I wanted to have a bunch of tattoos. Zigzag Man, some of you aren't old enough to know who Zigzag Man was. He was on rolling papers back then in the day, you know, remember, anybody remember Cheech and Chong? All right, there's a few old brothers out here. 
listened to that whole album, I don't know how many times, even rolled that, and one of them came with the big paper we were, Rob Dog and I were talking about. We rolled that up. We smoked that when I was in high school. But we, there was something that my grandmother said to me before I left for the Navy. And she said it was a sin to have a tattoo. Grandma's old school. And she even quoted the scripture out of Leviticus. And I was in at least a hundred tattoo parlors all over the world. Japan, Philippines, Singapore, Australia. I've been all over the world. I could never bring myself to get a tattoo. I had one all picked out. You're next! I just can't do it. Well, my, my shipmate said, well, you're just not drunk enough. I go, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with my grandmother. She influenced me. Come on, I'm going somewhere with this. She influenced me. I don't have one tattoo on my body. And I, I think if you have a tattoo, I'm not condemning you. God's not condemning you. It's just for me because of my influence that I have. Are you being influenced? Or are you an influencer? Somebody better shout in this Nazarene gathering here. No, I'm just kidding. You're a Nazarene. I'm just messing with you. We pick on the Nazarenes quite a bit. So I got out of the service. I got married. Had a bite. My first wife, mm -mm, not so much. She wasn't real thrilled about having me having a motorcycle. Did my own thing. And then I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version of this. Because I know we're on we're on time frame here. How are we doing on time, Brother TR? Five minutes? Well, give me five more minutes. Raise your hand. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Thank you so much for the extra time. Just messing with you, honest. I know you want to hear me. I got a divorce. Messed around for several years. And I got tired of it. I said, Lord, I hadn't, I hadn't really cried out to the Lord for a while. I said, I need a godly woman. Single guys out there, you want a woman? Why don't you ask the Father for a woman, a godly woman? A woman that is perfect for you. And lo and behold, the Lord sent me that godly woman. Oh yeah, see now that's, that's, that's like the organ playing in the background for the preacher, you know. That's a shouting sound right there. Hallelujah. I've been married 33 years. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Little did I know that my and my wife wasn't living for the Lord when I met her, but neither was I. Little did I know that when my wife was 16 years old, and she never told me this. In fact, I had a bunch of books for Bible college that I had gone through. You know, I went to Bible school uh, through the Assemblies of God. And I had a bunch of books and I was going to give them to the Salvation Army and stuff. Cause I, you know, I was living for the Lord. I'd already gone through them and stuff like that. And she said to me, she says, oh, because we were partiers. We drank a lot. We rode horses for many, many years. Packing up in the high country in Washington State there. And that's what we were into. Cowboy music, you know, I played around the campfire 4,500 feet. Packed in for two weeks. In fact, I went on my, uh, went on my, uh, we went on our, um, our, uh, what do you call that? Uh, honeymoon, honeymoon. We went on our honeymoon with a pastor that married us and another couple for two weeks, and that was our honeymoon with the horses. But then something happened. Something happened about 2000, uh, was it uh, 2001 when the towers came down? September 11th. I sat there at the edge of my bed, and I watched that. Didn't even go to work that day. And I said, and now it's coming. What I was saying, what I was saying to myself was, the Lord's turn, the Lord's return is coming quick now. When I saw those planes fly into the tower, and I sat there, and I weeped, and I asked Jesus, to take me back. See, I don't think he would. 
I turned my back on it because of the influence that was coming into me from the world. I wasn't let, letting the Father influence me through His Word. And I just weeped because I thought, you know what? I turned my back on Jesus. How many know that His mercies are new every morning? I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done, where you're at right now. And I know that the Lord is speaking to some hearts here today. I know He's speaking to some hearts. I don't know, maybe you're not into something real, real bad, maybe you are. But my prayer for you this morning is to let the Lord influence you through His mighty Word. You know, the rest is history. I got out of horses, I was moving some cattle over in uh, eastern Washington one year, and I was about 56 years old. And I was with a bunch of men, we were on a men's ride. And I had a new horse. And I've been bucked off a horse before, but this time, this horse wasn't letting up on me. And that horse bucked me off, and I got hurt real bad and had to go to the hospital. Bust, I uh, punctured a lung, busted a bunch of ribs up, they had to give me morphine, my wife had to come and my and our foster daughter had to come over and pick me up and bring me home. It was then that I said, you know what? I think I might be getting a little too old for riding horses. One thing led to another. The Lord came. We were into cowboy ministries for many years. I was assistant uh, associate pastor for a cowboy church. If you don't know what a cowboy church is, just like a biker church, only everybody's wearing cowboy hats and cowboy boots. And kind of doing country worship, praise and worship. TR and I, we've been musicians together for 25 years. We traveled on the road, and that's what we played. We played cowboy music. If you don't know what cowboy music is, it's kind of like country, only with a different twist about horses and saddles and uh, riding in the high country and riding the plains. Kind of like the uh, Roy Rogers, Gene Autry type thing. Then my wife and I became senior pastors at a uh, uh, mainline church. So we were in the we've been in the ministry for about 18 years, and we retired about four years ago because I felt the Lord was calling me to be more of an evangelist, and I couldn't do it inside the walls of the church building. We are the church. We're having church right now. We don't need the church walls, but in Washington State we kind of do because of the rain. You guys can have church outside every day. Well, we have to go in the building. So we gotta have a building. So I'm not coming against a, a, a brick and mortar. I'm not coming against a church, an established church, because we need to support the local church. Each and every one of us should be plugged in somewhere. I don't care what you got going on. I don't care how you feel about the church. The Bible's pretty explicit about not forsaking the gathering together of the saints, especially in days like this. And I know I'm paraphrasing. So forgive you Bible scholars out there. We have to be the influencer. We've got to quit letting the world influence us. Jesus was an influencer. Do you know that? He influenced 12 men. Not just 12 men. There was women too in the ministry. But 12 disciples. And I'll tell you what, he had a tough job. Because they were fishermen. And they're, they're worse than bikers. Have you ever hung around fishermen? I mean, guys that fish all the time. I mean, I'll tell you what, they're tough. They gotta be. I mean, they're out there on the water. They're fighting the elements. He had a tough job ahead of them. They weren't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. They were not perfect at all. I'm going to leave you with this scripture, a couple scriptures actually, and then I'm done. Jesus said these words here. He says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing, but be cast out and be trodden underfoot. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hid. Amen? 
You're the salt. You are the salt. You are the light. I want to encourage you to be an influencer. After you come off of the mountain, even though it's flat here, we're still on the mountaintop. But when we go down into the valley, oh, the valley of the shadow of death, the valley, the valley where there's temptation, the valley where there's influence coming from the right and from the left. And it's not the word of God. And it's not a brother or sister. See, we can love on each other here and we can support each other here, but then we got to go out into the real world, our world, to make disciples of all, the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One more verse and I'll get out of here. Paul says this, and be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. Be what? Transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. Of your mind. That ye may do what? Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God, God God's got a plan for you. Give me some piano right there. Will you give me some piano, man? Well, take me out. Thanks, sir. I grew up, I was in a church where I had I had an organ back there. It was, he played the shout and praise and chords type thing. The preacher would just kind of go along. Give him some of that. Give some, hey. Ha! 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 I feel his presence. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, oh, man. hallelujah. Yeah, do not be conformed. Don't be conformed. But be transformed. Let's be transformed today. Let's be influencers. Let's be influencers when we come down from the mountain. I love you guys. I pray for each and every one of you when we pray for the chapters all over the United States. I wish there was more warriors here. But you know what? Don't despise small beginnings. Because we've been posting stuff all the way from Washington. And there's been people on there going, man, I wish we were there. Man, I want to go there next year. Man, I want to be a part of that. I want to get, get in the presence of the Lord. And I want that anointing to fall down upon me. Because I know that if I can just get to the altar, if I can just get a touch from his hand, if I can just be there,
city kid. My wife turned me into country boy. We lived out in but actually, I was starting to get into it before I met her. God's always talking, but it's up to us to listen. So, you know, uh, we're excited. Today's going to be a, a, a jam-packed day. Maybe you just came for the ride, and we're glad that you came for the ride. But we know you just came for the ride, and God's going to give you a ride. <laughs> give you a ride. God's going to reach out and touch yeah. you. He's going to grab you right where you're at. Come on. You know, if it's one person that comes up here, you know, maybe a little discouraged, maybe not knowing... You know, this whole thing, this whole walk with God. Am I, am, I, am I up for this? Am I made for this? Can I do this? You know, maybe, you know, we reach that one person. Rob Dog A, it's all worth it, right? Putting all this together. If Jesus didn't go after the 99, he went after the one. He left the 99 to go after the one. So anyway, we're getting ready to, uh, for, for, to get ready for our ride. We're going to, uh, we're going to have, uh, if I can get uh, our, our pastors and leaders to come up, those that are our prayer warriors to come up because we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have the riders stand next to their bikes. We're gonna say a little blessing before we take off on our ride. But before we do that, uh, just a few uh, a few things to be aware of. Those that aren't riding, that are staying behind, uh, where's where's Chaplin? So Chaplin, can you come up here real quick? While he's coming up here. Uh, Chaplain Jake, we call him Big Show, and uh, Lady A, where's Lady A? She's I'm back here. Over here. Oh, oh, Lady A, wave your hand. They have they have really gone out of their way to make sure that the kids that are here, while we're on our right, uh, they're not just babysitting, but they got um, uh, uh, projects and, and neat things that they're going to have them do. Um, so if you're not going on the right and you're able to help out. Um, please uh, see uh, Chaplain Jake, Big Show, or Lady A, and uh, we don't want them there with 20, 30 kids all by themselves. Um, but can you just give a little idea of, of what you guys got planned? Yeah, so we got some uh, relay races that we're going to be doing over here. We're going to be setting up another little wet pad over here where the water's at. We got like a little kind of pad that shoots up water and stuff for the kids to play in. Uh, we've got some bird houses that we're going to put out on the tables, some little arts and crafts that they can paint and put together, take home. Um, on the relay races, we got gift cards that we're going to be handing out for the winners and stuff like that. So we got some stuff to keep them busy. We're also going to have go-karts over here. I think Buffy is going to help out. We're going to have go-karts going around. There's a track on the other side. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a track on the other side with some go-karts. And we're gonna have that going around too for the older kids that stay back. Um, I think you have, they said uh, over 12. So figure that out later. But that's what we got so far. So uh, let's do this. Um, I'm gonna make an executive decision, Rob Dog. Hope that's okay. Hey, let's uh, take 10 minutes, use the restroom, do whatever we gotta do. Those are going on for the ride. 10 minutes, hey, let's be back here at 10. Um, so we can uh, uh, do the blessing of the bike. We have uh, Sanger Chapter uh, Road Captain Rhino that's going to give some instructions before we head out. Yes, right. Thank you, Rob Dog. So uh, we're expecting the ride. We got uh, the, the, the ride uh, entirety is about an hour, but we're going to have two stops along the way. One is going to be at Santa Maria Harley Davidson shop. That way we can go there. If you want to buy a shirt or souvenir or whatever, um, check out uh, the Harley shop. We're going to spend a half hour there. And then from there, we'll continue the rest of the ride. The next stop, we end our ride at, what is it called? The train, the train, 
train restaurant. Rock and roll diner, but it, the, it's really cool. The um, it's shaped into a uh, train. So anyway, um, but it's a rail car. So anyways, we'll end the ride there. So we're expecting to be back by two. From when we get back from two to six is kind of free time. If you want to take a nap, go see, go to the pier, go to the beach, whatever. But I'm gonna highly, highly encourage everybody to be back. Six o'clock, uh, we're making tacos, um, and then we'll eat, and then uh, seven o'clock service starts. You're not gonna want to miss. We got uh, a lot of special things that, that are gonna be happening, and not only that, our our uh, our guest speaker tonight is is Brother Loto. Yeah, yeah. And Lady A said, if you have kids and you're on that, you have to come back right after lunch. Otherwise, she starts charging ten dollars an hour. One more thing he wants to add. You got thirty minutes. Yes. Thank you, Rob Dog. So anyway, hey, ten minutes sharp. Meet back here. Rhino will give quick instruction on the ride. We'll bless the ride, bless the rider, bless the bike, bless our time. So we'll see you in 10.